So this lesson we're going to be dealing with MIDI data and MIDI instruments, both virtual and hardware. But first of all, I just want to talk about the origins of MIDI data and what it actually is in the first place. So MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface and it's a protocol developed in 1983 by manufacturers of synthesizers to allow one synth to play another remotely. So the developers of this also found out that the computer could record and play back this data and it completely revolutionized the way music is produced. Now the implications of this is that one person sitting behind a computer or um, a MIDI sequencer could control multiple instruments simultaneously and hence could compose multi-part music all by themselves. So it's very important that we understand that MIDI data itself is not an audio signal. MIDI data on its own does not make a noise. MIDI data is a list of commands that we send to um, a hardware synthesizer or a virtual instrument and it's actually that device that takes in the MIDI data, processes it and kicks out an audio signal, a noise at the other end. So what sort of commands are contained in a MIDI event? Well MIDI events say when you pressed the key, which key on the keyboard, how hard you pressed it, which um, velocity is another word for, for how hard you pressed it, when you took your finger off the key and when you've moved a pot or a fader on your synthesizer or controller keyboard that transmits controller data. So just to recap, MIDI data itself is not an audio signal. We send MIDI data to something that takes it in, processes it and gives us an audio signal out of the other end. And that's the basic point that we have to understand. The thing is about MIDI data is that unlike audio, once it's been recorded, it is completely and utterly editable and changeable. We can change which instrument is, is playing our MIDI data and hence can get a completely different sound from the same um, MIDI events. We can tidy up recordings that perhaps aren't perfectly in time. We can change the keys that have been played. We can do whatever we want with our MIDI data. So MIDI sequences such as uh, Live or Logic, Cubase, Reason, etc. work by recording these MIDI events along a timeline grid that can be played back at any tempo. When you press play on the sequencer, it simply sends the MIDI data that we've created back to the synthesizer, whether that's hardware or virtual, which then plays all the notes that we've recorded. So the MIDI data is converted to sound via the synthesizer or virtual instrument. We can then take the output of that synthesizer or virtual instrument and turn it into an audio clip. Now as well as um, recording MIDI notes that can be then sent to a, a synthesizer to make uh, noise, MIDI data can also be used to control Live's mixer section, can be used to control any effects that we're going to be using and it can also control parameters on the virtual synthesizers. So to sum up, it's very important to gain a good understanding of how MIDI works. I'll put some further notes on the workings of MIDI in this week's handout.